What is up, YouTube? If you are new to my YouTube channel, first of all, welcome. My name is Mr. Kyle Cohen. I'm a fourth grade teacher in Cleveland, Ohio, and today is Sunday. I, in my four years of teaching, have gone to work on a Sunday, like twice. I honestly think this is the second or third time in my entire teaching career. I try to really limit myself to the amount of schoolwork I am doing on the weekends, but it is Sunday, I am here. If you saw my last video, you will know that I did, in fact, test positive for the virus. I missed an entire week of teaching in my district. We need to have a quarantine for 10 days following the first symptoms that you had, if you were symptomatic and then you test positive. Anyway, my 10 days are up. I am back in the classroom. I am feeling more like myself again, which is really great, but I needed to come in here today to get my life together. After having a substitute teacher for many days, I needed to just see where things stand, see what is going on. I also thought this was the perfect opportunity to touch base with all of you and give you some updates on things that are actually working in the classroom. The beginning of the school year is so crazy. There's so much going on. We're teaching in a pandemic. I missed a week. There's so much negative that we could be focused on, but instead, I wanna focus on some good things. What actually is working in the classroom? And please excuse what I'm wearing. Again, it's Sunday. It's Cleveland Browns day. So I'm gonna update you on some things that are working in the classroom. Let's get into it. Something that has been really great has been implementing 10 minute breaks into the classroom. You'll see behind me, I have my brain break slide posted. I have students on like a weird schedule. So like we have partner teachers this school year. So my partner teacher and I split up content. So I'm teaching math, science, and social studies while she's teaching reading and writing, like all of English language arts. So for me, when I have between math and then science and social studies, we have a 10 minute break in between. There's a lot of reasons why we take a 10 minute break. First of all, we just sat through a 70 minute math block. We were working really hard through 70 minutes. I need to stop. I need to take a minute, catch my breath, eat a snack. About every single day at approximately 11 a.m., regardless of how much breakfast I eat, I am starving. Any of my friends from summer camp down below can attest to the fact that I am aggressively hungry every day at 10.50 to 11 a.m. So we take a 10 minute break. We stop our math abruptly when it's done. Like we don't just keep it lingering on forever and ever. I mean, if we're in the middle of something maybe, but typically we cut it off after 10 minutes and we take a 10 minute break. It says right up on the board that students may use the restroom. They can have a snack. They get a drink of water. They may read or they can go on their Chromebook. It is 10 free minutes. In the fourth grade, they fully manage their 10 minutes. This is also an incredible classroom management strategy, if you will, because I'm not really having students use the bathroom during math. Now, if there's an absolute emergency, of course, but they can wait for the 10 minute break. And then on the contrary, or also, at the end of social studies, during social studies, no one's going to the bathroom because we just had our 10 minute break. I'm very clear with students what the expectations are during this 10 minute break. If you need to use the restroom, you wait for the 10 minute break, you go during the 10 minute break. If you need water, if you need to get a snack, right? All of that happens during the 10 minute break. And then the rest of your time is yours. Now, if students are not working during math, let's say, let's say they're off task, they're not paying attention, they're being disrespectful, they're not meeting our classroom expectations that we set together as a class, then guess what you're doing during your 10 minute break? More math, and it works out great because I love math and I will continue doing math. I'll probably be eating my snack as I'm helping you continue your math that you were refusing to do during math time but it's fantastic. I don't like taking things away from students. I don't like pulling recess, but I will pull your 10 minute break because in my opinion, it's a privilege. So run to the restroom, come back, and we'll continue working because what else is there to do but work more? So highly recommend looking into a 10 minute break. Some people might be nervous about the amount of freedom that we're providing students, but at the same time, we're teaching how to create and make really positive choices. You can use this 10 minute break however you want. Obviously it's structured. Obviously I'm very clear with what the expectations look like, but we're also providing students with an opportunity to make some choices. And during a school day when you don't really have a lot of choices, this is one that you could provide your students. While I'm also having my board on, I, I will tell you that this is working. Something else that's working, we got these new fancy like 
fancy smart boards, and it's great. I'm still figuring it out, but this thing is nice. And I mean, look at my background. I mean, that, that is working. That's great. We love it. Go Bucks, am I right? Something else that's really working are setting expectations. This is something that I do on the first day of school with students. I really inform my students that our classroom is a community. It's a classroom family. I say it all the time. So with that being said, at the end of the day, yes, I am the teacher and so much of the classroom community is cultivated by me, but at the same time, it's really up to students. I shared in my first day of school video and what we did that I talk with my students about the things that we see hear, do, and feel. For fourth graders, I find that this language is really effective. It's not the rules. It's not this is what you can do, this is what you can't do. But it's what do we want to see, hear, do, and feel. So we all close our eyes and we picture what the perfect classroom looks like. Like if you were to create your own perfect classroom, what does that look like? And then we have conversations about what students are seeing, hearing, doing, and feeling in that perfect classroom. And we write it up on the board and we hold one another accountable to these expectations. So if you are to ask me what the rules of my classroom are, it's right up here, it's posted. We come back to it each and every day. Tomorrow's Monday, I've been out for a, a week. So I'm gonna absolutely have a conversation with my students about the things that we wanna be seeing, hearing, doing, and feeling. And if we're not doing these things, if we're not actually experiencing them, then we're not holding one another accountable. And then we talk about what that looks like. We talk about what we're going to do if we're not holding one another accountable. And what's awesome about doing this on the whiteboard and keeping it posted all year round is that I'm able to erase it. So if we decide that there's something up here that we don't agree with anymore, we could change it. Really have enjoyed having these things posted and referring back to them each and every day. Something else that's working are bean bags. Now last school year, we unfortunately were unable to have any sort of flexible seating. We had to just have chairs. But this year, we're allowed to have flexible seating so long as you are able to easily clean it. And I'm able to spray these down and students love them. Now unfortunately, I don't have enough bean bags for everybody. But we talk about taking turns and if you use the bean bag yesterday, maybe you let someone else use it today, things like that. I'll give a full group lesson on something. Let's say it's a math lesson. So I'll give a 20 minute math lesson and then we typically go into like independent work time or small group time or partner time or whatever that looks like. When they're working independently or with a partner or whatever, they're allowed to move around the room. So we're maintaining our three feet of distance, but we're doing it comfortably. So I really have enjoyed bringing back the bean bags. While I'm laying on the floor, I'm gonna talk to you about these little seat, sit spot, these little circles on the floor. Now in my, is this, is this making you uncomfortable how I'm laying? If so, I, I apologize, but I, I'm trying to get my face and the, the sit spots. But in a recent video, in the day in the life of a teacher video that I recently posted, I will link it. I'll link it up here. In that video, I talked about these little things that I put on the floor. These are sit spots. They're like Velcro on one side. They're only meant for carpet. So if you don't have carpet, I didn't have carpet last year. I used tape, pieces of tape. But these sit spots have been awesome because they keep students' desks where I want them, which is three feet apart. I don't actually want them three feet apart. It's just what's the expectation for the pandemic. So they're three feet apart and they are neatly in rows. If my desks are in rows, you bet that they're going to be in organized rows because at the end of the school day, when they were just like shifted all over the place, it made, oh, I had to, in order to leave here, straighten all of the desks. And typically I would have a student help me with that, but I haven't, haven't quite figured out who my helpful students are when it comes to organization. So it takes a, it's a very specific student, one who is very neat and organized to my level. I had one last year and the year before. I'm still figuring out this year's student, but anyway, the sit spots have been great because now I have to say is the front two legs go on your sit spots. 10 out of 10, would recommend. I will link them down below with an affiliate link, so you should buy them using my affiliate link and then I can make millions. One of my absolute favorite classroom additions this school year, and one of my favorite things that actually has been working, the stickers. Now, the stickers weren't my idea. Molly thought of these. I'll link her Instagram and things down below. The stickers. The students love them. First of all, I have a black pocket chart that I got from Amazon. I will link it down below. Along with the stickers themselves, also from Amazon, super cheap. They come in like packs of 100 for like $5. They are just little stickers 
that you can put on, look, let me do the influencer thing. You could put the stickers on water bottles. You can put them on Chromebooks, iPads, whatever your technology is, if students have it, folders. And I've been using them as incentives. Great example. So I was talking about the 10 minute break earlier. The expectation is that when the timer hits zero, so I start the timer at 10 minutes, when the timer hits zero, my expectation is that you have nothing on your desk except what we need to start social studies, which for us is our social studies workbook and a pencil. So when the timer hits zero, everything's away. It means your snack's away, water bottle's away, Chromebook is off your desk, books are away, anything from math is away. It all needs to be put away where it's ex expected to go, and then you have your social studies materials out. In the beginning of the school year, very few of them could do that. A lot of them were thinking like, oh, the timer hit zero, let me get ready for social studies. No, that is not the expectation. The expectation is that when the timer hits zero, social studies starts. Transitions are huge. They can make or break an elementary classroom. Rehearse your transitions over and over and over. Talk about them over and over and over. You will feel like you're repeating yourself. I am too, right? Like that's how we teach our students. I would say, you, grab a sticker. You are ready to go. You grab a sticker. I would use their name, right? So I'd say like, Kyle, you come grab a sticker. You are ready to start social studies. Thank you. Mr. Cohen, come grab a sticker. You are ready to start social studies. What is that doing? First of all, it gives the kids who are meeting expectations and exceeding expectations, it gives them a little something, right? Who doesn't want one of these? It also is encouraging everyone around them to get with it because you're not ready. I'm not calling students out who are not ready. I'm not saying, Kyle, you are not ready. Let's move it. No, I am positively incentivizing the students who are exceeding expectations. So that is one way how I have implemented stickers. It's just random moments of the day. I will throw them to students who are going above and beyond. I also will use them for whole class incentives. So like last week, for example, all of our students turned in our math homework all the next day doesn't usually happen. Typically one to three to, I don't know, five students forget their homework, which is fine. But when they all bring their homework, great little incentive. Let's say we're playing a Kahoot and we have a winner. Awesome, grab a sticker. The stickers have been great. They're posted at the front. Everyone wants them, love them. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you had fun hearing some of the things that are actually working in my classroom. I can make an entire other video about the things that are not working in the classroom or in education in general. But today, I was in a positive mood. Grateful that I'm feeling healthier, ready to be back in the classroom with students tomorrow. Really grateful for all of you who choose to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you do not choose to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Maybe now's your day. Maybe today's the day. Go ahead, hit that red subscription button down below so that you do not miss out on any future videos. I so appreciate you being here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.